they were having questions about um, like inner and outer classes and just everything everything that we covered up to this point for the exam. Uh, what I know about Java, so that way um, it'll just be like a refresher. Because I know that a lot of people are learning Java for the first time, and um, that's probably like a lot of information. Uh, a little bit of background about like how I how I know Java is that I took a year's worth of Java courses in college at uh, UVA, which is University of Virginia, and um, we went over basically. I feel like we're doing like a year's worth of what what I learned in college and like however long we've been studying um, Java so ever since we started Selenium, which is like you know like a, a month in a month we covered what what we covered in two semesters. So um, oops. so it, it is if you're studying Java for the first time, I like um, I feel like it is very. Um, you know, it's a lot of information. So I will just uh, show what I know, and that way um, it'll hopefully be uh, beneficial. Okay, so let me just open up the two homeworks that we had up to this point, and I'm I'm going to start with. So somebody said um, that. Okay, work. That uh, they, they had questions about inner and outer classes, so I'll just start off with that. And um, basically, like from my point of view, like the the purpose for um, inner and out, outer uh, classes. Okay, well, let me just uh, get a class going here first. So. Um, outer class. I don't think I have that. Yes, map, use map, nested classes, test. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be kind of similar to what we did in. Oh, that looks like it's already exists. Oh, it is. Already, I already have that. Outer class one. I'm going to call it outer class one. Okay, so basically. Um, you know, this right here is just like a class by itself is an outer class, but if we do, if we uh, create a um, inner class, public class, or actually, let's make it private, um, private class, inner class one. Um, so again, like outer class is the is the name of of our outer class, and then inner class is the name of our inner class. Um, so like as we know, classes can have two types of objects, like or not objects, but um, two types of things inside them. Uh, the first thing that they can have is our variables, and variables can be um, things like, you know, ints, doubles, uh, strings, anything basically like that. And then the other thing that they can have, um, or just any objects in general, and the other thing, ints, um, um, num1 equals 25, public, double, um, D one equals thirty point nine. Okay, and public. Okay, so these are like two variables that we created. Public. Or no, wait. Public string. STR one equals new. Okay, um, this is a test string. So these three variables are variables. So every time we create an instance of our class one, we're going to have these three um, variables as well. Without the constructor, which um, 
hopefully everybody knows what the constructor does by now. So if you have um, outer, or wait. So right now I'm writing the constructor of a class. If you don't write a constructor, um, the Java program just um, assumes that your constructor is like uh, something that just has nothing um, passed to it. Um, okay, so by by doing this, oops. So I have three variables here. So I'm gonna um, when we create a instance of our class one, I'm gonna um, instantiate two of those. I'm gonna say um, so num one or wait ints num one and double d. Actually, I'll do num two and d two, and I'll say so num one equals num two, and then d1 equals d2. So again, um, what we do here is when we create an instance of the outer class one object, which we're making right now, um, when we so when we pass in these two variables here, we can assign any value to them that's different from from 25 and 30.9. So I hope that um, for people who did not understand the purpose of a constructor, I hope that's kind of, it's a very simple concept and I hope that it, it kind of sticks with you um, because it's even though it's a simple concept, it's one that's very important um, and we'll just leave string the way it is now. Okay, so the, that's the constructor and um, inner class. So the inner class won't have any um, okay. And then we'll that size constructor will have like one public void. Um, we're gonna create a method here. <laughs> Say um, prints to screen. Prints to screen. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do sysout, sout. Um, this is to print to screen outer. So this is our outer method. This is our outer method. So in the tradition of what Mafi by um, does, oh, test project window, test projects. <coughs> Maximize. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. One second. Okay. Th does that help? Okay. So, kind of explaining what what's going on here is um, we're creating a uh, method, a class, outer class one. We've got variables here. We have a constructor. Um, I honestly, so if we create another class called, um, like another se class separate that extends this class, um, if you use constructor, you have to use the super keyword, or the um, that, that's a keyword in Java. But I, uh, you guys went over that yesterday in Code Lab, so I, um, I, I need like a, like a reminder. I haven't done that in a long time, so I need to remember how to do that, but. Um, if you so here we were creating a class, and as we know in Java we can create another class that extends this class, um, and in that case we would have to, we would ha also have to extend so to speak the constructor, and we would have to use the uh, keyword super in that case if we um, if we wanted to if we didn't um, if we didn't. Uh, create our own constructor, but that's just that's probably getting ahead of ourselves. Um, okay, so the okay, so now I'm going into the inner class, and I'm going to create a um, 
let's see, private void um, prints to screen inner. Okay, so this is our inner uh, method, which in the tradition of of um, what we've been doing, I guess you know we, we a lot of our methods uh, just print things to the screen. Um, I know that you know most time, most of the time in Java, you know your method doesn't really print stuff to the screen, but here it's just it's a good way to show how methods, like the logic of creating um, Java methods. But actually, um, I also wanted to mention. Um, I, I studied Java for a year. This is our inner method. So I studied Java for a year in college, and I actually got to the point after a year where um, I had to do a final project at the end of my second semester, and I created a Tetris program. Like right now, that 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 seems to me really advanced, even though I I know it's not. Um, it seems to me like there's a lot going on there, but um, you know, after just just a year, you know, we've been studying it for like a couple job for a couple of months. But after a year, you're if you're if you just study a little bit each day and get a little bit better, then you know you can create whole programs, which is which is really nice. Okay, so this is going to be our um, one method that we create here. So. Now that we have an inner class here, we're going to create an object of the inner class in our outer class. So we'll say um, inner class one. So I'll say um, I C equals new inner class one. Okay. Um, yeah, actually, you know what? Um, oh, well, I'm gonna create a int test or num one. So this, the inner class is gonna have a um, an, a number variable as as well. Okay, so we're gonna initiate initialize it to say twenty, and I'm gonna have a constructor here that says um, public inner class one um, and then int num one. So again, if, if the variable that you pass into your constructor is the same as the, um, the variable, the local variable, you know, or what I mean by the same, it has the same name. So obviously, when you pass this into the constructor, um, it can have any name it wants. And if it's the same as this, uh, your local variable, you say this dot num one. When you say this dot, it see it they light light up. That's that's how you know that the program knows which num one you're talking about because you got two different num ones. You got one here and you got one there. Uh, equals num one. So. Okay. So now that we have a constructor here, we are um, obligated whenever we create an instance of inner class one in our outer class, we are obligated to pass in an integer. So why not pass in fifty-five? Bam, perfect. So um, again, like the thing about Java is that everything has to be kind of like smooth. It has to all um, like follow the the laws that uh, Java has created, and as long as you understand those laws, and um, more importantly, in addition to um, understanding all of these classes here, you know, and kind of knowing what the classes do, uh, that's kind of when you are like, you know, you can create whatever you want. You can use Java as a tool to create whatever you want. And I'm not there myself either, but I just kind of understand how. The, that works, and it's really it's really cool. Things begin to work. Um, okay, so we got the method here, and public string. I just want to make sure that this is our okay. So now we 
um, have created an instance of this class, and then we can say, let's, let's see, and then we'll say, let's see how after that. Okay, so we'll create another method called public use inner class. Um, okay, and here I'm just gonna. Um, so I C dot and then print to screen enter. So um, this is a method in my outer class that I'm going to use the object, the inner class object that I created in my outer class, just to show, um, just to show that um, how how that relationship works. Okay. So inner class one, and then what was the name of the method? It's right <coughs> print to screen enter, and that's the method though. So we'll just do that. Why not? Print line, um, and just to uh, show that we can create more than one um, inner class, you can have uh, you know Mafi by. I'm not sure why the they they. You know, he's called Mafi Bai. I'm not. I don't. I'm not quite sure why his name is that. But the instructor, um, in the, I mean, the our teacher, uh, he had two uh, classes, and I'll do the same. So the first inner class that we um, have is called inner class one, and then we'll call our second inner class inner class two. And this one, I won't make a constructor for this one, but I'll have I'll make it have one method. Public Actually, if somebody could um, explain what, why he's called Mafi Bai, um, I have a feeling that's a, it's it's a cultural thing, um, or just. Anytime, you know, like I'm, I'm curious why his, why people call him that, but um, that's that's a, on a side note. Okay. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay, so, um, so let's just create a method here. I'm trying to think of a method. Um, so we'll make it private. It doesn't matter. If, in this case, it doesn't matter if you say public or private. But again, the difference between the two is. Um, well, it's it's encapsulation that this that uh, in the homework homework one, he had us um, he had us use the concept of encapsulation. That's what it is in Java. It's important to protect your variables so that way um, objects can't get access to other objects that they're not supposed to. So that's where the public and private um, descriptors come in. But in this case, it really doesn't matter that much because, um, you know, this. But it just doesn't matter, as as you probably understand. But so I'll, I'll say private um, void. Uh, you know. Okay, we'll call this like method something different. Use um, inner class two. Inner class two. So that's the name of our method, right? And then, um, and then we'll put something out to the screen again. Oh, it's actually really cool to, uh, you know, to use like instead of system dot dot print line, which is what, like before when I would be like coding, I'd I'd be like you know writing system dot out, and you feel like you're doing work but you're not. Um, I watched a couple of videos on YouTube about um, J Lab. Or uh, IntelliJ, I meant, and um, you know, a lot of people, it's it's just ridiculous how like it, if you're good at this and like you can use your keyboard, you don't even have to use your mouse at all. Um, there's ways like if you're using like Control Enter and like um, you, it just writes the code for you basically because um, a lot of times the um, you know that this machine that kind of gives you. A uh, little hints, you know, like when you don't, uh, you know, when you when you say like, 
when you have errors in your code ahead of time before you even compile, this is an example of um, inner class two. Okay. Um, when you don't like the, the same logic that tells you ahead of time that your code is not going to compile correctly, it can figure out. Like if you say create like a scanner object, but you don't Im import the proper um, you know, you don't import the proper library. Uh, it, it the the code just logically figures knows what you have to um, fill in for your code to work correctly. So uh, if you haven't like had a chance to to check out some videos on YouTube about um, JLab and how to use it, it's it can it's just incredible. Like what all they're doing is like typing on their keyboard for the most part, and they're um, creating like really fast code. So when if you can get there, like all those things can come in really handy. Okay, so we created one method in our inner class to uh, class. So let's go create an instance of whoops. Uh, create an instance of our inner class two here. Um, inner class two. <clears throat> okay, so that's an instance right there. So now that we've created it, see, if you don't use it anywhere, if you just create it, then you, I already know what that's going to say. So it just says that I haven't used it yet. So I'm going to create use inner classes. Okay, so I see. Okay, so in this method, you know, because I can do whatever I want, I'm writing the program. I am going to use the second um, object as well. So, what was the name of that method that we created? Use inner class two. So I'm going to call that as well. Okay, so this is you know a start on a a class that I created myself just um, by using the Java logic and. You know, obviously it doesn't really do too much, but it gives an example about how these um, this logic works, which is the more important thing here. Okay, so this is our first. Uh, so this is our class. So now we're going to create a um, a new class uh, called Class One Test. I can name it anything I want, but I'm going to call it Class One Test. And again, important, just um, and I agree with Mafi uh, uh, Mafi Bai that it's important to follow um, not protocol, but I can't remember the word. Um, you know, like when you have a class, you always have to name it with a capital letter. That's just like the right thing to do. You don't have to. Even if I have a lower case letter here, it's still going to work fine, and no one's going to complain. It's not going to have like a compile error. But really, um, you classes just have to always whenever you create a new class. It's this just the right thing to do by giving it a uppercase letter, um, and a lot of times be an uppercase letter. That's how you know when you see a um, like an object with an uppercase letter. That's your your mind should go, oh, you're creating an object of some class. So, um, and if you look carefully here, like in a, in the API Java API, obviously all the classes are uppercase. Just yeah, I'm sure you kind of knew that already, but um, just important to to do that. Okay, so this is our class class one test. Okay, and this one as so as we know, um, every um, program has to have one public static void main, PSVM, and this is going to be the one that's uh, for us, okay. So we have this class. We're going to create an object, create an instance of outer class one, outer class one, um, my class, or why not? Yeah, my class equals new outer class one, and it's going to complain because I had a constructor. So I need to pass in two, um, two variables, and this is going back to 
having constructors is that it um actually, here, I'm <coughs> of our class. Well, constructor. Okay, so an integer and a double. Okay, so I'm gonna pass in and if you scroll your mouse over this, it's the same thing. It tells me that I need an int and a double. So I'm gonna I'm gonna create say int um, num1 equals 30 and then double uh, d1 equals 23.0. Okay. Um, and then we're going to pass in num1 and d1. Okay, perfect. So now we have construct created a object and uh, no complaints from the program. Okay. And now we are going to, so now that we have a ob, an object of outer class one, we're going to use some of the methods. And as we know, all of our methods just print something out to the screen, but we'll, uh, we'll do that. So that way, dot, and then, so let's take a look at, so we have, we can call our inner class methods. So inner class one, um, and it's, so we're going to call our inner class one, inner class two. Um, Print to screen. Okay, so we're going to first use our print to screen outer method of our outer class. So um, this this method belongs to our outer class. Belongs to our outer class. Okay, and um. So this method <coughs> belongs to inner class. Or oh, wait, no, this is a constructor. Method belongs to inner. I think I can actually uh, mute. Let's say people can hear you. Click to me. Um, yeah, let me let me see if, how that works. This is my first time as a. Um, but I think actually uh, it, it has become muted. Not sure how to mute. Okay, so going back to this. Okay, so we called the method of our outer class uh, lap now. My class dot. Um, use inner class. Let me go over here and see. Okay. Yep. So we just call the two methods of my class, and um, this method right here just does not use any of our inner class um, objects, but th this one does. So uh, just to compare how those two um, are structured. Okay. So let me save it by hitting Control S, and then. Um, one thing that I find very useful is you go um, Shift Alt F10, and then these are all the programs that I can run right now. But um, the one that I just wrote is called Class One Test, which is always so I hit two and, and it runs. It should run at least. Um. Oh, it's building right now. Okay. And okay, so here is an example of uh, outer and inner method. So. Um, if you follow carefully everything that I did, we just created two objects, two inner method objects, and 
um, call the two methods that are in our inner methods. And um, all that was in our outer class. And my interpretation of having inner methods, or, or I mean, uh, inner classes and outer classes, is that um, you know when you call when you create an instance of a class, um, it's kind of like like using an analogy of like a car. Which you, <laughs> if if you're if you're creating a car, you know, through Java. Um, and you create an instance of car, um, you have to you have to include things like wheels, like um, engines, everything else that makes up a car. And all of those things have to uh, just think of it as um, you like uh, say take an, an engine that's part of a car. That would be an inner class of your car object. Because for one, for one car, you have to have one engine. So when you create a car object, you would have you would create a engine. Um, an engine class in, inside of it. So uh, just very useful thing again um, to to keep in mind. Like just and really, whenever we create. Um, yeah, you know, when we learn about different things and you know, like inner and outer classes, it's uh, it's good to think of real world examples. At least that's what I do about how this be can become useful for me whenever I um, use Java. So, and I just kind of think in my head, just what 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 good can come out of this, or like what is the purpose of people creating this? Okay, so that's that, that's like an example of inner method and outer method. Um, let's see here. Um, going back to sorting algorithms, which is what I did. Uh, there's a lot of algorithms here. Um, a lot of them I don't remember. I don't remember. Um, I studied them back in the day, uh, like seven or eight years ago. But um, I remember that they're very useful. They're just different ways. Okay. Um, they're they're different ways of of managing information and um, so a really cool one that uh, so it was uh, it wasn't merge sort. What was the one that we did um, in class? I was trying to remember. Use outer class. Um, oh, oh, selection sort. Yeah, um, and I. I'm not sure if, if maybe you have already looked at selection sort on YouTube or on um, Wikipedia, but I, I just want to show that right now um, because it uh, has a nice picture about um, right here. So this right here uh, is what I wanted to show um, because selection sort by itself is like a very simple um, algorithm. So here we have. Let me just uh, go over what we did in in class. Is that we just create an array with um, with numbers that don't have any particular uh, order to them, right? So if we look, like it's not in as ascending or descending order. We can like add as many or as little numbers as we want here, and all we have to do is just create this this format right here is is called the um, is called the selection sort and so, so some of you like may be wondering why there's two four uh, four loops here and um, the reason for that is is like this uh, diagram right here is a great way to like to to show it and um, to, to see why this array of uh, numbers that is not sorted from, say, us. Sorting just means putting the numbers that are in random order into uh, order from either lowest to highest or highest to lowest. And so really what we're doing here is we save it. 
one test selection server. Okay, so it's parsing building. Okay. So if you look, you know, here, these numbers are not in any order, but when after our sort is complete. Um, our numbers are ordered from lowest to highest. So just just really cool how um, how that works. And on Wikipedia, it's uh, it kind of shows the uh, like the, the diagram about how you know this right here is the same as what what the code does if if you look carefully. Um, and and the reason for two for loops is that the first for loop is is like the yellow that's going down, and the second for loop is the blue, that's that's so the blue is always decreasing as the yellow fills in. So the first the first for loop is the yellow part of the uh, selection sort, and the second one is the blue one. Um, Let's see. Merge sort. <laughs> oh man. Um, honestly, like, let me let me see if I can figure out merge sort. I I, I remember that. I know it's like a more efficient way of of. Uh, okay, so basically, here let me go back to this uh, sorting algorithms. So we have all sorts. If you look here, you know we went over one uh, sort right now, which was the selection sort. It's going to be in here somewhere because the selection sort is like the just the most uh, basic sort. Just from from what I understand, it should be here. Selection, selection sort right here. Um, the so selection sort um, sorts have different speeds at which they they work. So like when you have say in our example we've got like what you know 20 numbers here, 20 30 numbers, it doesn't matter what sort you use. But literally like in real life scenario um, there are thousands like you might have an array with a thousand um, or not not even a thousand, that's not a thousand is not a large number um, no matter um, what you're doing, but like you, you might have like a million, <laughs> a million um, integers in your array, and so the speed at which your array is sorted matters when you when larger become, uh, when the numbers become uh, l like large to a certain extent. So uh, this diagram, if you look up sorting algorithms on Wikipedia, you can it kind of gives you an idea. Um, in sorting, there's something called uh, big big O notation. Uh, so basically, um, n if you if you look here, the best, average, and worst. And what what this is kind of uh, explaining is the speed at which your um, at which your um, algorithm. Uh, completes its job, right? So um, n is just the number of uh, number of items that you are sorting. So in in this program that we have right here, n is equal to like 30. I don't know how many numbers we have, but it looks like 30, like 20, let's say 25. So here it doesn't really matter, but um, the more numbers you have, yeah, so runtime and memory requirements listed below should be understood to be bigger. So, so um, runtime is one factor to take into account, and another one is memory requirements. I guess um, memory requirements, we'll take a look at that in a second, but um, so the more numbers you have, the, like these numbers uh, change. So let's, let's look at merge sort. So uh, it takes n squared um, in... Like I'm not, I can't really, I'm not sure how like the exact terminology goes, but basically n squared is a huge number. Like and and so as your n grows just a little bit, the amount of of time on average or at best uh, grows like exponentially, like 
squared. So that's why if you look here, it's in your your sort is in red. You know, it's a very simple sort. Like I said before, it's like usually the first. Um, last time I learned um, sorting algorithms, selection sort was also the first one. Um, but and the reason for that is because it's the simplest one, but it also takes the longest amount of time to complete. So n squared is long. Um, if you just take n times log of n, you know that's a much sick, uh, simpler or mat much quicker sort, as um, especially as n becomes larger. And I hope you can see that if you can um, imagine that. Um, you know, n so say n grows by one. So you um, here. You know, you have like a million items, and then you you add one item, so you have a million one. All of a sudden, you're you're squaring that, so it's it's basically a very bad sort. Um, I won't go into that any more than that. And the the fact that it's highlighted in red just means that it's it's a very slow sort. And if you look at the fact that it's n squared, you can kind of see that in the code as well. That um, you have two for loops. So those two for loops are the reason why it's um, n squared. I, um, I I know that some of you can understand that. I uh, maybe not all of you, um, but you know the fact that there's two for loops is um, the reason why it takes n squared amount of time to complete it. Depending how many what, n is the number of items that you have in your um, array. So. Uh, the second one that we started on that he, that Mafi, um, by uh, explaining class, he just explained it, he didn't really go over it, is the merge sort. And if we look here, um, you know, the, the sort, let's, let's click on this to see what it does. But really, if you recall, you have an array. Yeah, so it breaks it down. That's, that's awesome. See, like, a lot of this is just, uh, so... It, it just breaks them up like this into smaller arrays, and then and then it just takes each one, and so it takes each one and then just um, it builds it back together in the right order. See, so um, we got these two; they go in the right order, and now they're going to take these two right here. And it's very easy once you have two smaller um, arrays that are that are. Um, in the right order, it's easy to put them into a larger array because um, then it would be if they were completely disorganized. And 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 see, it goes one. You have two arrays. It goes one, three, five, six, and two, four, seven, eight. So you just have to look at each one in order to see to figure out which one of those two numbers goes next. Um, so it's kind of a. Um, uh, it's it's not as like quote unquote trivial, you know. It's not as simple like this. Maybe I think that selection sort anybody if if they had to um, figure out a way to sort an an amount of of numbers, um, I think selection sort would be like the first thing that anybody would come up with. Honestly, I don't know. I I don't think there's anything simpler than that. Um, <laughs> A little bit more complicated, and it's not it's not as like obvious. I don't think it was to me at least. But this right here is is a great illustration um, about how it works. And if we scroll down, a lot of times we actually have code here. Uh, this code is not Java code. Um, so it's like you know you can't really like uh, copy and paste it to compile it, but um, there are. Unfortunately, I um, would not be able to explain um, or like write merge merge sort right now. Like, if, if I like if had a little bit of time to think about it, I could. But right now, I, I honestly did not do that today. Um, I honestly did not do, do that today. But really, um, so quick sort. I remember learning quick sort as well. So let's. Say Take a look at some of the sorts that we had, um, or that we mentioned in um, that Mafi Bai mentioned in class. Um, so, like the the, the purpose for so, uh, sorting in general is to have information that's like organized that you can access anytime. Um, and I remember like learning a lot of these. Selection sort is the most obvious. Uh, heap sort. I don't. 
I, I think I learned that one. I just don't remember what it, how it works. Um, merge sort, we went over that, so it just breaks uh, breaks arrays into into in half and though in half and half and half again until you have objects arrays of size one, and then you build them back together. Um, not not a bad uh, sort at all, but I unfortunately would not be able to do that right now. Um, quick sort is another one. Let's take a look to see what quick sort does. Um, I, I, I remember I uh, learned that as well, or um, I had some experience with that as well, I just don't remember how, how it goes. Um, Okay. So that's kind of the um, the sort. Maybe um, go over the other topics that would be on our exam, starting just with like abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism. Um, you know, just just going in order here. Um, something that. I am not as familiar with is the exceptions. So uh, these uh, Java keywords like this and static, those are pretty simple. But uh, final and finally are have to do with exceptions, and I'm not as um, uh, familiar with with final and finally and how uh, they work in an exception like the exception um, like when you're doing exceptions but I'll do the other stuff that I that I can't explain Abstra abstraction encapsulation inheritance polymorphism okay if that's if that's uh, if that's all right so abstraction encapsulation inheritance abstraction inheritance uh, Alex, before yeah. you show the encapsulation, like, can you go over the Aura class again, please? Because I kind of like joined twenty minutes late. Oh yeah, so absolutely. Go, Aura and inner classes. Absolutely, um, I would be happy to. Okay, uh, so these, um, while in the in the first part of the session. In the first part of the session, um, we created a class called, um, you know, we, we named the class Outer Class, and uh, the class has two inner classes inside of it. And um, the reason for having inner and outer classes, like the uh, example that I gave, is that a lot of times in Java, uh, you are creating, um, whenever you create an instance of a class, um, that if it's like a comp if it's something complicated, a lot of times you have to oh uh, setters and getters okay um, that class has to create another class inside of it for it to work and um, like the example I gave is say we have a class in Java that um, <laughs> we have a class in Java that we call a car that that is designed to um, like mimic a car. It's obviously not going to be like a real car, but like it's somehow it's um, it's a, a class called a car. And obviously, like a car is not something simple where you can just like create a couple of uh, variables inside that class, create a couple of methods, and like you're done. Um, if you want it to be like a real complicated car, as a car is. Um, you would create. You would have a um, like a car would have like wheels um, and tires and an engine. So the example I gave is that if you were to create a car object in Java, you that car object would most likely have inside of it a uh, an inner class called um, engine or wheels. But at the same time, now that I think about it. Uh, you could also have like a completely separate class that creates an instance of it. Um, so 
really, I'm not sure what an inner class would be used for. And honestly, like, I don't, like, I understand what an inner class is and how to um, declare one, but, um, like, I, I haven't really used inner classes in my, in my work with Java um, because, as far as I know, every time you create, if, if you have a class that creates another, an object of another class, then why not just have a separate class? But um, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. So, um, so here is our is our class called outer class one. We have two um, two variables that we declare and uh, a string. As well. We don't really use the string. That's why that's why this little light bulb is here. I already know that ahead of time. Um, or we don't really use it. But and then we have. Um, we create an instance of our first inner class and an instance of our second inner class. Okay, so, and if we take a look here, um, inner class one, and then we have a constructor after that. And as, um, you know, Mafi Bai asked, like, what a constructor does, um, and not everybody knew the answer to that. And I, I hope that you um, do know what a constructor is. Um, because we've covered it a couple of times now, uh, it, is, it gives initial values to your variables. So really, because we have this constructor here, we don't even have to give uh, these two values initial variables. We can just declare them, and then we can um, initiate them right here with our constructor. And um, so this is, inside of our outer class, we have uh, inner class one, which is our first inner class, and then inner class two, which is our second inner class. And um, these two classes behave like our, our you know, full-fledged classes in every respect, except for the fact that they're declared inside of another class. That's the only difference. Um, so our first inner class has, um, has a constructor, which, which instantiates um, our variable that we declared as well, num1, and then it has a method. And then our second inner class, which is right here, um, also has just, just has one method and no constructor. And so, so really, that's kind of like the, the structure of, of everything. So we have outer class, um, outer method, um, our class, or wait. So, <coughs> method of outer class, second method of outer class, and then uh, inner class one, and then inner class two, and and then every as we um, know, every Java program has. Um, has to have one and only one um, method um, called public static void main, and when the, when you compile it, this is the the method that it looks for uh, when running the program. So that's why you can only have one. Um, so these two are kind of like tied together because when when we run public static void main, um, it uses the information that we created in this class right here. So um, now that we have this class, I hope I, I explained outer class and inner class um, sufficiently here. Um, so we have this uh, this class right here that has inner classes, and then we have a uh, a test class with the public static void main method that uh, runs or that utilizes and creates an object of outer class one. So here we just create two dummy variables that we are on, oh. Uh, we create two dummy variables that we pass into our constructor um, because if we look at um, outer class, it initializes two of the values. So we pass in um, num1 and, and d1 into um, our object to inst instantiate our my class object. And then we just call the two methods that we uh, declared up to this point, um, print to screen outer and then use inner class and uh, use inner class uh, 
calls the methods of the two um, instances of the inner class that we create that we created. So right here is uh, so you class if you look carefully. This is the method, and this method um, calls the two methods that we created for our inner class. So IC and IC2 are two objects that we created up here. Uh, mm -hmm. Inner class one object and inner class two object, and we call the two mm -hmm. methods for inner class IC and IC2. Mm -hmm. That's what we use here. So that is the um, uh, Oh, okay. Um, constructors, yeah, yeah. Constructors, for some reason, they can be like people aren't like comfortable with them. And honestly, I for some reason I like now like they're just like so they they just make so much sense to me. Like they just it's like such a cool way to to use Java and like there's nothing. But I honestly was like confused about constructors as well. Um, so let me. Let me create another class that will concentrate on uh, constructors, okay? Um, because just to just to emphasize what constructors do, I'm going to call this class constructors because obviously I can name it whatever I want, okay? Okay, so public class constructors. So here is our class that the first thing. That we do, and before I actually move any further with this one. I'm going to create a um, class called um, constructors test. Constructors test, right? So every time we create, we create a class, um, we create a class, and then we create another class to uh, to like to run and the first class. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, to and I'll explain why. I'm doing this in a second. Okay. Um, so right now, this is our class. It's a pretty pretty weak class, I have to admit. Um, it, it literally has nothing, but it still like works. So here we're gonna do we're gonna write constructor. Um, we'll say like we'll name it CS equals new constructors. Right, and we create a um, object of our class here called constructors over here. Um, oh, and in our class constructors, we're going to have a variable of type um, boolean, and as you all know. Uh, Boolean is either a true or a false uh, type of um, primitive uh, type in Java. So we'll say primitive or a Boolean, um, you know, like is on. We'll, we'll declare it, but we won't say if it's either true or false. And. Um, when we create a constructor, okay, so we have boolean is on, and let's just create a uh, a method in class constructor called um, public void to screen that will print itself into screen. Say. Uh, testing constructors. Well, um, say uh, test string. No, this is a test string. Sorry. This is a test uh, message. And we. Actually, we're not going to make this boolean. We're going to make it int. Um, is on. Um, 
is on value is and then we're going to do okay so we're going to print what value is on has and <laughs> Our, uh, this class called constructors test, and we'll we'll call that method that we just created. So we'll say cs dot. Um, why not? why can't we? Oh, yeah. So I actually made that mistake. So we have to do. Um, we'll we'll do this in the public side code main. Do that. We'll move this in here. And then we will call the. Um, I think the constructor should have. Yeah, that that is that is correct. So what we'll call cs dots is on, or not is on. Um, print to screen, right? That method that we just created. We'll call it. Um, save it. Do shift alt and then F10 to run it. And constructor test. So let's run it. So it's building parsing. So this is a test message is on so everything is printed is on value is one okay that that's the value of um, is on right now um, but we go back to our class that we created here right now there is no constructor that we created um, we, we we don't specify a constructor explicitly um, Java kind of creates a um, like a, a default constructor, so you can kind of uh, think of this class as having a default constructor when you don't declare one explicitly. But now we're going to declare a um, constructor explicitly. So what we're going to do, um, as somebody pointed out correctly, that the you define a constructor by naming it the same as your class. It's it's a method that has the same name as your class. That's the definition of how to uh, that's the syntax for a constructor. So we write public constructors, and then we pass in what value um, we want is on to have. So here we're passing. We're going to be passing in a value into um, into the constructor. Okay. So if you notice here carefully, we have two different variables, but they're both called is on. And this is when we use the key, Java keyword this. So when we say this dot is on, we're referring to local is on up here. And then we say equals is on. And so what we do is when we create an instance of this of this class in our um, test class up here, we pass in a value for is on that we want. So here, as you can see, it's complaining. It's like, oh, you have a where you got to be passing something in, but you're not passing anything in. So now we're going to say we're going to give it a value to pass in of say 65, right? So here, every, now because we have an explicit constructor here that takes in an integer. Every time we create an instance of constructors, we have to pass in a value in these parentheses right here. So, but the good thing about that is we pass in the value. We can tell um, the object what value we have we want is on to have. So, if we create another um, instance of constructor called constructor CS1 equals new constructors. So now we create another um, uh, constructors object, and now we're going to pass in um, 44. So that so this um, object or this instance of of the object has value 44. Um, 
How how do you how do you mute on here? Hold on. Um, um, muted. Yeah. There we go. Much better. Thank you. Um, there we go. Yeah, that's much better actually. Um, I found that little button. Um, I apologize. I didn't do that, do that earlier. This is my first time being a presenter on um, go to training. Uh, last time we did uh, training, we did uh, Team Viewer, which is actually another like free program that's really cool. Okay, so, um, okay, so going back to here, uh, going back to using constructors. So here we we created two instances that two have two different values of um, two two different values through the constructor. So we're passing in. Six, 65 and two, uh, we'll call it CS1 and CS2. You know, we're passing in 65 as the initial value for is on for CS1. We're passing in 44 as the initial value for is on for CS2. And we're passing in um, constructors. We'll do, we'll do three objects. CS3 equals new constructors. And we're going to constructors. Um, we're going to pass in zero as the initial value for is on for the third object. Okay, and now uh, we are going to uh, print that print a screen, which is and very quickly um, um, as we learned in Java, uh, we have. Let's see. Um, we 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 learned that every object, every single object, is um, extends the um, objects class. So these methods right here that we um, have not like declared. It's like where do these methods come from? If we haven't declared them in class, in, in our class, like the only method we have right now is print to screen, right? So how come when we say like when we um, write CS2 dot, we have all these other methods here. Like, where do they come from? That doesn't make sense. But if you go into the Java API um, and we look at the object class here, um, if we look at the object class, these are the methods that every single, um, every single class will have no matter what. That's just like the way it works. So if we, if we look at clone, equals, finalize, get class, all of these things um, notify, these are the ob these are the methods that we see when we um, so notify, notify well, get class, to string, um, equals, all of these are part of the object class. So we have all the methods of the object class as well as any methods that we create in our actual object. So that's where all those other methods come from that aren't explicitly stated because they're imp implicit, they're implied. All right, cs3.print2screen. So here, um, I'm calling these three, the, these three methods for, um, I'm calling the same method for all three objects just to show you um, that because our constructor gave each one different values, we're going to see those like printed to screen. Okay, so I'm going to save it. I'm going to do Control Alt F10 and constructors test. Okay. Okay, so here, um, you know, it did exactly what we I expected the program to do because. Oh, what do you know? Um, is on is 65, just like we said. For the first one, it's 44 for the second one, and it's zero for the, the third one. Okay, so here that was an example of, um, you know, because the constructor has one variable that we pass to it, we got to put in one number in here um, when we declare an instance of that of that class. Um, but you can actually have as many 
variables passed into it as possible. Okay, so um, so let's let's go ahead um, continuing the the conversation about uh, uh, constructors. So let's say we have an int. Every object of type constructors is going to have an int, and also it's going to have like say a string. Um, object so string uh, we're gonna call it test okay um, and every time we instantiate we create an instance of constructors we gotta we're, we're gonna pass in a we're gonna um, like assign a string to that well okay so now we're gonna change the constructor here okay so um, int we pass in is on, and then we're gonna pass in uh, string test. To um, initialize it the same way we did int. So we say this dot test equals test. So what this line of code says, th so this dot test means the test, the local value of test. And then equals test, uh, which is the test that we pass into here. So this test that we, that we instantiate here equals a test that we pass into the program. So now that we have two uh, variables, one int, an int and a string in our constructor um, that we require to correctly um, instantiate a type, a constructor type. We have to go back here. We're going to see that. See, it's complaining already because it's really smart, you know, in a way. It like knows ahead of time what, what to do. So it's already complaining that, oh no, you know, our constructor has two values, but here you only passed in one. That's not good. Um, so here for every single um, for every single one, we gotta like give it a string so that I can instantiate. So we'll say like um, you know, uh, Let's see. Like, I'm not sure what string to any string works really, but um, this is a test. This is test one. This is yeah, test one. Um, we'll say hello, how are you? And we'll say um, midterm. Next week, whatever, right? Um, any string works. So just, we just want to like make them not all the same thing. Uh, let's go back into our constructor or into our class here, called constructors, and create another um, uh, another method. That's going to print whatever we pass into our object. Okay, so we're going to say public void. Um, so as you can see here, our string is called test. So I'm going to call it public void print test. Why not print test? And we're just going to say print. And as you know, any any old string can go in here. So we're just going to say print line. And then pass in the test object, just like that. Okay. So all this does does is takes the test uh, string that we pass into the constructor and it prints it here. Okay. So we go over here and we say we're gonna just call the that new method that we just created print test for all three um, cases just just to show how the constructor works. So we'll say cs1 dot print test we'll say cs2 dot print test and as you can imagine it's going to print the strings that we pass in uh, when we instantiate the objects but it's going to sort of highlight that and then we'll say cs3 dot print test okay um, so these are the the new methods that we have called. So now that we've kind of updated our program a little bit here to understand the 
constructors. We'll uh, save this again. Do um, Shift F10, and it's going to. I'm actually not going to uh, x this out because I'm going to update this afterwards. Okay. So basically, um, oh look at that. So we got you know one, two, three, four, five, six lines that we should have printed, and that's what we have here. And um, so the first one prints the uh, is on value that we have, and then the second one passes uh, prints the the string that we passed when we declared the object. So there's the first string that I printed. Oh, look at that! It's the same one. And um, hello, how are you? Oh, look at that! It's the same one as well, right? And midterm next week, um, that it's the same one. So it's just very, uh, it's really cool because it's like so simple, but um, as we will learn later, um, you know, all, all it takes is just learning how different classes work here to uh, to become like exponentially better at uh, Java. But that, as long as you understand like the basics of constructors and things like that, okay. Uh, um, so we have here something called uh, polymorphism. Um, okay. Uh, so, so now we know that every time we create an, an, an object of type constructors here, we've got to pass in two different variables, right? An int and a string. Uh, but what if, so let me go back here to our class and we'll give, uh, what if we only wanted to say pass in only a string? when we create an object for some reason. We, we wanted is on to have value one, but we only want to pass in a string. So this is called overloading the constructor. Uh, also a very simple process, very simple concept that has like a very cool name to it, right? So we're gonna overload the constructor. Um, so what we mean by that is we are going to create another constructor. Yes, you can do that. Constructors. And this time, we're only going to pass in a string. Okay? We're going to pass in test. And then we go over here, and then we do the same thing. So we uh, notice here in the signature of the method, so everything that's in the parentheses of the method is called a signature. And in the signature, we're only passing in one um, one like uh, variable instead of two, right? And and I will show you how that works. So here we're passing in the signature of our constructor. We're only passing in one variable, and again uh, to let the the program know. Um, and instead of doing this dot test equals test, we're, I'm going to do something different just to show that you can do different things. Equals. test1 plus test. See? So you can kind of, uh, as you can begin to see from uh, experiences that you can, uh, strings can be added with another, you know, um, so test1 plus test plus something else, you know, uh, test1. So really we're um, creating Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. So uh, what we're doing is just creating. Um, we're assigning when we call this constructor. We're assigning um, this string to have uh, this value right here. Why not? The, just to show you, I just want to show you that you can do different things. Um, okay. So we're going to go back to our test um, class, and we're going to. Um, create another instance. So I'm going to put a another space here. So actually, um, four equals new constructors. Okay. So let's let's think of a new string to pass in. Oh, um, what what I'm going to do is I uh, go over here and say string. Uh, test equals uh, 
So I'll just say test constructors. Um, any any old string works, right? Testing constructors, and we're gonna. So I declare a string here, and then I pass that uh, the string that I declare here. See, as um, as the colors show, this the string that I declare here. I'm passing into here, so I can either whenever I instantiate an object, I can either hardwire it in or I can pass it in, right? Um, so and I'm going to go down here and call the, the two methods uh, like we did before for this new object that we created. Um, so CS4 print a screen. What do we do? So print a screen. We're going to call print a screen and then we'll do um, print test. Okay, perfect. So we're calling the, the, the two methods for that new object. It's like, you know, you may be wondering, like, you know, for these three, we passed in two uh, variables, an int variable and a string variable, but for the this one, the last one, we only passed in a string, uh, we only passed in one variable of type, type string. So how does that work? But I will, um, so I just saved this, I'm going to compile it, and I'll explain how that works in a second. Um, how constructor over overloading works. Okay, perfect. So uh, look, test one, testing constructors, test one, did exactly what, what we expected it to do. Um, so, so as we can see now that we have uh, two different types of constructors uh, for our constructors class, um, we have an option whether we want to pass in two uh, variables or one variable. So that's why it's called over uh, construct overloading of constructors. Is that like during comp compile time, the um, like when it comes time to instantiate your variable, the compiler uh, based upon the um, the variables that you have here that you're passing in, it decides. Not it doesn't decide. It knows which one. You know, it's not hard to figure out which which one of these constructors to use. If you're passing in one, oh, you probably are going to be using this constructor right here. And if you are passing in two variables, then you're probably going to be using this one right here. So that's why um, it's called construction overload, con overloading constructors. Um, constructors. So it based upon how many values you pass in, um, it knows which one to to do. Okay, um, but the the thing about using constructors is that um, if you're not going to use a constructor, then you got to give these uh, variables initial values. Okay, so I'm I'm about to create a third constructor. Um, I'm about to create a, a third constructor in a second here. Let me see. Um, Yeah, so I'm going to give this one an initial value. I'll kind of explain why in a second. So string test uh, initial value. So I'll just call this, give uh, the initial value to this. And I'll explain why in a second. So I'm going to create a third constructor just to, um, and I'm called, and this time I'm only going to pass in an int, okay? And I'm not going to pass in test, and that's why I gave this an inst. Uh, why I instantiated a value for this because I'm not passing in a value into constructor, so it's a, it has to have an initial value. And I hope that that makes sense. That's like um, okay. So int we're going to say is on, and when when we call this constructor, we are going to um, say. This dot is on equals the is on that we pass in plus seven. Okay, plus seven. So now when we create go over here to uh, the test class that we have, when we create say a new um, object of type constructors here, constructors CS five equals new. But we only pass in a integer of ten. 
the program knows to use this constructor right here. So it's very simple. So based on what variables you're passing in, it knows which um, which one to use. Okay. So again, uh, like before, we're going to call the two methods that we have created: uh, print to screen and uh, print test. And we, you know, let's um, because we've done like the first two a lot already. Whoops. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna notate notate them out. So we'll just take take a look at CS three, four, and five. Okay, but we'll just concentrate on the last two because those are the new ones. So we're gonna save it. We're gonna run it. Okay, so um, oh, look at that. We pass in uh, when we create the um, the instance of, or when we create this object right here, CS5, constructors 5, and we pass in the, um, the variable of 10, so, um, it gives out 17 here, as you can see, um, because the constructor adds 7 to whatever we pass in. So that's why it prints out 7. And as I, I, as you recall, I gave an initial value to test because we don't, um, uh, we don't, we wouldn't be able to uh, use this method or uh, print test. We would not be able to use print test method without um, giving it an initial value, if that makes sense. Because we're not passing it into the, we're not passing it into the constructor. Um, Okay, so let me take a look at the questions for a second. Okay, so overloading constructors, okay, and I'm going to say this is constructor one. So our, our, our method, or not our method, our class that we just created, constructor two and constructor three. So our class that we just created has three different um, constructors, and based upon what values or what, what variables and what types you're passing in, the Java machine um, knows which one, which constructor you're using. So it's pretty simple, you know? Like, if, if you're doing an int and a string, you're going to be using this constructor. If you're passing, uh, as we're, we're doing here, you know, an int into a string, we know it's going to be using this constructor. If we're passing in uh, a string by itself, it knows to go to this constructor right here that takes in just a string. If we're passing in a integer by itself, it knows to um, initialize using this constructor right here where it takes an int by itself. And then you can give it any instructions, any old instructions you want um, here. Um, actually, you don't you don't have to initialize. Um, you know, now that I think about it, you can just declare it here, string test. You still need test to have a value. As because otherwise, look if if you don't if we just leave it like that we don't. So back up here, test is just declared, but it doesn't have a value. It should not it should not run. So let's go over here. So save it and then should should give us an error message. No. Oh, okay. No. So when you don't declare a um when you don't when you just say when you just declare a method and then or when you just declare a string and you just try to print it out without initializing it without giving it a value it just prints out null like a null string okay but say um, you don't have to give a, a value to test up here you can in the constructor even though you're not passing in a value you can say test equals and then get, name give it an initial value of whatever you want so even though you're not passing in here you can still give it a value down here so test equals this is a test. So same thing. So now, um, okay. So and then let me let me run this for, for a second just to show you that you can do that as well. And then I will take a look at um, questions. I saw I saw some questions down there. Um, okay. So I'm running it right now. And this is a test. See, and that, that's that's the uh, 
the the value that I gave to test up here. So just it just goes to show you that you can as long as you follow the rules that Java has for you about uh, you know um, strongly typed like um, so going back to Java being a strongly typed language, you know everything has to be like if you know if if you're passing in an int and a string, it's got to be um, ints and strings. You know. Um, I'm I'm not explaining that very well, but that's kind of as long as you're following the the rules of like the kind of the rigid rules, then you can do whatever you want in that context. That's kind of like the cool thing. It's I kind of think of Java as like a it's like a sandbox in a way where you have like things that at your disposal and you can create whatever you want. Um, okay, so um, let me take so. Okay, for the second constructor, why did you put a string in constructor's test class? For the second constructor, okay. Why did you put a string in constructors? Well, the second constructor takes in a string. That's um, only a string. So it does nothing to the uh, is on. If we wanted to, we could um, give is on a value or say like plus equals 15 or know, 12 so it just adds 12 to whatever but that's the purpose of the second um, that's the purpose of the second constructor is that it only uh, this only takes in a, a string so it can only do something new you know like like it can be a variable you can do anything you want with um, in terms of like non-variable stuff, but you can only like change something by passing in a string. You can do anything you want with the other variables over here, but you have to only use the string. Um, yeah, so you have to only use the string. So that's that's the re so. Any, any constructor that you have um, works the same way. And um, so take a look at this. So now that we've kind of um, learned about constructors, I know for a fact that if we look at the string uh, the string class over here, any class that you look into, you can see um, field summary. OK. Uh, constructors. OK. So oh, let's take a look. Any class that we, that we have in that API has constructors. Um, most of these are like super complicated. I don't know what most of these are used for. Um, I'm sure that they have a purpose. I just don't know what they're for. But any class, so what, what this means is that these are things that you have to pass into it when you create a instance of that class. So a string, um, look, if here's an empty constructor where um, initializes a newly created string object so that it represents an empty character space, okay? so. If we if we just say new string, then this is it just returns null. But um, I know for for a fact um, that like like the scanner object. So if you do scanner um, sc equals new, it does not have an empty constructor. Okay, so you can't create an instance of the scanner object, which is what we're doing here, without putting something in here. And um, okay, so it already uh, imported that for me. Some I don't even remember doing that. But uh, you and uh, so let's go over here to uh, the scanner object and see. Um, oops. How do you go back? So, so this right here, as you can tell, the Java API is your best friend because it can show you everything that you need. Um, not sure why it's like so hard to read like that, but hold on. Um, okay, yeah. So here are the constructors. So as you can see, none of the constructors are just like uh, you know empty brackets. You gotta pat. You gotta always say um, what how you're uh, you're using the scanner. 
Um, I'm not sure if we did this or not in class, but like, so you can either pass in a file source, so construct a new scanner that produces value scanned from the specified file. So whenever you create a, a file, you, you can either do, um, you can pass in a file to create it, and then it's, it's going to start reading your file. Um, like, I don't remember, I'm not going to do that because that's, I don't remember, but that's just one constructor. You can do, um, oh look, you can do a file source or and a string. So that constructs a new scanner that produces values scanned from the specified, produces values. I'm not sure what character set name means, but that's another way to, to um, create an object is to pass in a file source and a string. Um, input stream source. Okay, this is the one that I'm used to. Okay, so constructs, constructs a new scanner object that produces values scanned from the specified input stream. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's the one that I use. Okay, so every time I do a scanner object, most of the time, I, you have to use system dot in. And what this means is that it takes input from the user. Um, so if we look um, SC, look at the different methods that we have. Um, next, finds and returns it. Scans and so can the input to returns it. Next string. <laughs> All right, sorry, I, I got a little bit distracted. Um, how do you? I'm like blanking out about how I use the um, the scanner object. Uh, let's see, next, next end. Okay, so next end. Well, let me try that one. Next, the ones that we used. I remember that we were um, having a discussion about next line and next. So let's take a look at that next line. Um, next, returns the next complete token from the scanner. Um, I'm gonna do uh, next int because I've kind of used that method a while. I kind of know how it works. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go back to my program and do sc dot next. All right. Um, first, I have, to, I have to say int number equals sc dot um, next int. Okay. So what, what this will do is it will read the number that I enter into it, and then I'll just do. Um, I'm gonna actually. Um, edit this out because that was old stuff and now um, sc dot or um, s out you entered oops you entered plus number okay so the, here's just an example of instantiating creating an object um, yeah I'll, I'll see that all uh, right here right as an, as an instance or an example of creating an object of type scanner, it's going to read whatever number I pass into it and um, you know, enter it back. Uh, this is just to show you the uh, constructor, um, construct, like the, the purpose of constructors again. Okay, so um, uh, compiling it now. Oh, I forgot to write something, but I'll say like 76. Uh, you enter 76. So again, um, simple, simple stuff. But that's uh, this right here is what we pass into the. This is what the constructor takes in, and then it instantiates from there. Um, okay, let me see what I uh, see. A couple of questions. Um, let me read those in a second. Okay. Um, 
Okay, for the second constructor, so I'm just l l reading this question. Uh, for the second constructor, why did you put a string test equals testing constructors? Um, oh, okay. Well, um, this, I could have entered it. I'm not, I'm not sure if this is why you're asking, but I could have just entered the string like this. Um, and it's the same thing, but I, so I hope I hope I answered that question. I didn't ha I didn't have to create a string up there and then pass that string down here. Um, I could have just done it directly. Um, why did you add string? Why did you add string testing constructors in your construction class? Um, I guess uh, that was just to show that you can overload your constructors and based upon what values you want to um, give initial values to when you create a new um, new objects, that was the reason for passing in, you know, we have a couple of objects that take in an integer and a string, we have a couple of objects that take in just a string, we have a couple of objects that take and just an int. So depending on what, and you will like see the purpose of this, of having different types of um, um, so you will see the purpose of having constructors do different things just based upon what you, you want your object to do. So it's just like, you know, freedom for, for doing whatever you want to do with the program. Um, so that is a little, so that's constructor one, that is constructor two, that is constructor three, and inside those constructors we could construct or we initialize the values to whatever we want based upon um, what our, we want our program to do. So that is kind of like what I had um, yeah, <laughs> Bilal, I was actually thinking the same thing. Um, I, you know, went over constructors, we went over, I explained the sorts, um, and how they have different, um, different runtimes depending on, when, when you have like a, an array j with just, uh, selection sort, just like 20, 25 different objects inside of it. It doesn't matter which sort you use. You can do the slowest one, which is a selection sort. But if you have like an array of like a million, a million numbers, um, then it really does matter what, how fast your sort runs. So if you can see a uh, selection sort is, um, where is it? It's the slowest one, but it's also like the simplest one to understand. Uh, we did merge sort. Unfortunately, I, I wish I could like do the program and, and explain how it works, um, but I can't right now. But if you can see, uh, it's it's a much quicker sort. Setters and getters. Okay, he someone did go through it when he was using. Um. So yeah, l last thing I want to do is um, go over setters and getters. Okay, so um, okay, I I'm going to use this this uh, class that I have constructors right here, and we have um, is we have two. Well, let's say we have we're going to make another. Whoops, what the heck? Um, double. Um, I'm a, like um, number num one. So right now, what I'm gonna do is, um, yeah, 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 right, um, exactly, private. Okay, yeah, thank you for reminding me. Okay, so basically, um, as I was going uh, explaining earlier about encapsulation, encapsulation, the idea behind encapsulation is not um, allowing not not just declaring everything uh, public, you know, um, so that way, you know, public this, public that. You there are some um, some variables like truly that you want to keep private that you don't want um, other 
um, classes or other objects outside of the class to have access to or to change. Um, so in, in that set, in that for that reason, um, there are something called uh, uh, setters and um, you know getters. So really, so here I'm, I'm going to explain what I mean here on this uh, this double. Uh, variable that I this variable of type double that I created that's private. Okay, so uh, what that means since it's a private variable, I'm going to just give it an instantiate it to uh, 11.0. Um, and usually point o, when you say point o, that's kind of a, a keyword that's going to be a double or a long, not an int. You can't say int equals 11.0 because an int can be just a whole number. Uh, it's an integer. Um, but so here we have a uh, variable of type double called num1, but it's 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 uh, private. So we would not be able to after we created these uh, variables here, say for example cs1 dot um, what was the name of our num1. We can't say num1 here, right? Because it's a private, it's a private um, variable. So, um, okay. So for that reason, you want to have a uh, a uh, what we call setters and getters. So we want to create a separate method down here, um, which which would be a public method, public void set num one. Oops. Or wait. Yeah. So like I think like a lot of these programs actually like um, they 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 are able to write uh, like setter and getter methods for you, but I'll just write it by just manually this time because um, I'm not trying to do it the other way, but. Okay, so here it, we're writing a method. Because this um, variable is private, we need to have a method that takes in a uh, a type of double. A I, I need to like word my sentences correctly. Um, a method that takes in a variable of type double, and um, we like very similar to construct this dot num1 equals num1 okay so what this does is it's able to set this uh, variable right here to whatever we pass into the uh, signature here um, so that was our set method for that variable and um, now we're going to create a um, get method so um, Um, oops, return num1. Okay, so the get method, um, it returns. So uh, when we say like public double get num, th this is the name of our, of our method right here. The double, the reason we write double here is that when you call this method, it returns a, a um, a variable of type double, and public just means that it's uh, it can be called. You know, it's not a pr private method; it's a public method. So, most important thing to keep in mind here is that since we're this method, uh, the purpose of get num one is to return this number right here. We have to say that it returns a um, a variable of type double, right? Otherwise. And as you can see, as you can see, there's nothing in the signature. We don't pass in anything here. It's not like set num one where we pass in a type of double. Here we're doing the opposite. We're returning a type double. So that's why we say double here, and then we return num one. And actually, I, I'm not familiar how to do this, but you know, if you have a bunch of methods that are private, you know, double num two equals twelve. Private double num three equals thirteen. There's actually a way. Um, 
I wish I I knew how, but there there's a way to just write uh, go to generate. There's just basically a way for for the you know because these um, you know set num one and get num one these are such standard um, methods in any program that the, you can just have the program write them automatically you know so but that's just a, a standard setter and getter method um, and let me just give like a, a quick example modify the num one value from eleven to whatever we pass oh I see. Yeah, exactly. You can do that. Um, yeah, so exactly. We don't have to say 11. We can just say, um, so yeah, that, that's actually a very good point. Um, create, constru create constructor. Really? Um, so, ge oh wait, generate? Oh, oh yeah, 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 get her. Perfect. See, you guys are teaching me stuff. See, um, so we want a getter and a setter method. That's cool. Get. So we can. We want a getter. We we just choose getter. We want a setter, or we want getter and setter. So let's say getter and setter. Um. See default. There's different templates. That's kind of cool. Um. I'm not sure what all this stuff is. I'll just say okay. Yep. Num2, exactly. So, okay. Where is num1 and num2 that I created? Oh, it's right here. Oh, it's it's it kind of inserted them right there. But um, I'm gonna move these up a little bit. But that's the idea. Um, yeah, that's actually really cool. So it just goes to show you that as long as you know what you're doing, like the program does like everything for you. Okay. So again, um, um, oops, number one. Okay. So last thing I'm gonna do is uh, like somebody. Uh, um, Okay, let me make this bigger. Okay, so here are the ones that generated. So num1, as you can see, is not instantiated to anything, okay? But when we go over here uh, to, like, we'll, we'll use the num1 of this object right here, of, of uh, CS1. So we'll say CS1 dot um, set num1, and then we gotta put, pass in a value. We'll say it equals 11.0, okay? And then we will um, I'm gonna delete this. We'll say um, so we just set num1, and then we'll say s out, and then we say num1 equals, and then plus we're just we're gonna get we're gonna get not num1 right get num1. So we just set it, and now we're gonna get it. Save. Um, compiling right now. So num1 equals 11.0, and it, it equals that because we set it with our set method, and then we we got it back by our get method. So those are the setter and get, getter methods. They're designed for uh, variables that we declare here. So instead of saying like uh, when when variables are uh, private. So okay, let me change this one from private to public, very quickly. So when it's public, you don't need setter, met, um, setter and getter methods. You can just say um, cs one dot num three equals twenty five because it's it's a pu public public variable. I can just call it directly and assign it that way. But when it's a private method, because um, num1 is a private method. We, as you can see here, um, you, we have to use the setter and getter methods that we um, declared, that we created to uh, change those values.
Um, that's kind of a that's kind of everything um, that I kind of wanted to show you guys. I know that I, that I could I could I'm supposed to. There's like another hour of time allotted, but um, that's like a lot of uh, the stuff that I knew. So um, I hope that you know really. Um, okay, so set method and get method both must be public. Um, let's let me think if that's true or not. Um, set method and get method and both must be public. So like really that's a good question, Paul, and I, I have to think through it. Like can they be private? If 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 they're private, does that defeat the purpose? Um honestly I don't I, I can't I can't think um right now if uh that's the case or not. Um so I can't answer that question. Uh so yeah so Bilal says that they do have to be public. Um I uh, uh, honestly, I, I really can't. I'm not sure for, for some reason. How else would you ask them from a different class? Um, yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. So there you go. Um, so yeah, so I guess they have to be public by default. And when, when, when we use the program to, when we use the um, IntelliJ to create the setter, met, um, setter and getter methods, they are... Um, these two methods were setter and me getter methods um, that the IntelliJ created, um, and they were both public. So, yeah, so that is a good indication that they have to be public. And that is kind of it. Uh, there's still some other stuff that I would have liked to have covered, but I think that, um, you know, we covered a lot with the sorts. And really, the most important thing as. Um, Encapsulation is implementation hiding. It, yeah, yeah. As some hawk is, is is saying the right things there. Um, so really, uh, you know, not to beat a dead horse, but it's it's all about um, like it's all about really going through the the process of this right here of, of typing and compiling and not having it compile many many times until like the one time that it actually does compile. So um, and uh, also, another thing I wanted to mention is that when you're reading the book, it helps to write out the examples that they have there um, in Java. Uh, it's it's a good way to um, to see what the authors want you to do. Like, don't just read it like like you would a normal book, but write in the code. And um, like when they have like note, don't don't write in the quotation marks, don't write, write in the notes, but write in just the code itself and run it so that way you can see what the authors were um, intending for you to learn. Uh, it takes a little bit longer um, to, to type in the code that they have, you know, for the for the books that, that we're supposed to be reading, like, but uh, it's, it's a really great way to learn um,